This is Allah's love for the Muslims. You're all going to hell anyway. Following Islam, following Islam doesn't get you out of hell. Allah's going to punish you. I mean, you can't just throw stones if you're living in a glass, glass house. You can't just do that because you just destroy your own argument. Your God hates everybody. Actually, he's unjust as well. And they accuse me of running away. So here I am coming to him again, and he's running away. He's running away. He's running away. The evildoers will be accountable. Those that appeal to the mercy of God will be forgiven. That is the Christian message. Verse in the Quran refers to the disbelievers. The Quran and the Hadith say that you were no. going to hell. <laughs> How are you, my man? Hey, you alright? Yeah, I'm alright, right, thank you. Where? Oh, let's go. So I'll talk with you another time. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, Happy Eid. Yeah. Happy Eid. Thank you. Enjoy. Okay, yeah, thank you. Enjoy. Okay, thank you. How are you, Mohammed? Ha yeah, that's fine. Happy Eid. Doesn't even reply. I'd like to ask you a question if you're free. Sure, okay. That's all good. Shall we do it this way so we don't we don't block the area? I'm happy here. I'm happy here. Okay. Fair enough, we'll do it this way then. I think it would be best to do this timed. Have we got anyone who's willing to time? Yeah, he can speak first. So I'm going round, I'm asking Muslims okay, about the question. Oh, uh, about I'm a question. You if he's not gonna listen, I'm okay, gonna speak to you. fair enough. Let him speak and then we'll talk. He's gonna run from this debate, guys. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Everyone ready? Everyone ready? Okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, brothers and sisters. Now, this is the manifest clear hypocrisy of Bob. Why? Bob last week was crying for an apology. Why he doesn't need an apology this week? You know why he doesn't need an apology this week? Because he's a hypocrite. He didn't run away from the debate because it was an issue of an apology. He ran away because he's ignorant. I bet that he was doing his homework this whole week, all night sitting down trying to learn about Muslim Aqidah. Oh, what is this word? I'm speaking to his Arabic friends. Please explain this word to me. Now he's acting like he's a man. You had your chance last week, Bob. Why did you run away? Why did you run away, Bob? Why did you run away? Now you don't not ask him for an apology. He's coming to me saying happy Eid. Happy Eid, where is your happy Eid last week? <laughs> where is your happy Eid last week when we were standing and I was telling you for 20 minutes, let's debate, be a man. Where is going on? Look, look at the manifest hypocrisy. Look at the manifest hypocrisy of these Christian preachers. Now they're coming, bring in a paper with them or bring in whatever they want to bring and say, let's have a discussion. I don't mind to have a discussion with you on one condition. You apologize, Bob. When you apologize, Bob, when you apologize to Ali Da'wah, when you apologize to Mansoor, when you apologize to all the Da'is in, in Speaker's Corner for interrupting them in the debate, as I already showed, now the hecklers are coming. Coming to interrupt Uncle, that. This is what I always, about. I always love your support. Thank you. But he's when just going to use that. So just for this debate, like let him talk. He's telling the wrong I know, thing. I know, I know. Uh, I know. He's I know. Wrong. Let him talk. Then we'll talk to him. It's all right. I will gladly let him talk. have a discussion with him. Now I'm going to show the childish behavior he was showing last week. Give me an apology, Bob. Or I'm not going to debate you. Go apologize. Go apologize to Ali. Go apologize to Mansoor. Go apologize to, Ham to Hamza that you were hunting him. He had to go to the police to stop you from following him. Apologize to the Da'i brothers and sisters. Apologize to the layman you're going to making yourself an expert on Aqidah when you're ignorant, when you don't know anything about Aqidah. And then I will gladly have a nice discussion with you. I have no issue with you personally. But apologize to my brothers and sisters first. And that's it. I'm not going to say anything else. You can speak to yourself. Okay. So, guys. He's called Muhammad Ali. I think he should change his name to Cassius Clay. Because last week, last week, last week, I gave him two opportunities to debate me. And he ran away from both. And they accused me of running away. So here I am coming to him again. And he's running away. He's running away. He's running away. He's running away. And, 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 yes, yes, he's running away. 
Now notice how he's trying to treat, treat me like a dog. Like a dog, he's trying to call, come, come, yes. Yes, 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 I'll, I'll follow you, don't worry. So here's my question, here's my question. Is that the word of Allah? Is that the word of Allah? Is that the word of Allah? Now do you see the derogatory way that the man who said, we do not apologize to those who worship a man as a god. And now he tries to mock by treating the Christian as a dog because that is their mindset. That is their mindset. That's fine. I'm not running. You see, the Dawa team have redefined running away as chasing you around the park running for a debate. Cassius Clay, come here. Cassius, come here. Come here, Cassius. Simple question. Come on. Come on. Is that the word of Allah? Am I holding the word of Allah in my hand? Am I holding the word of Allah in my hand? Am I holding the word of Allah in my hand? Okay. We've seen, ladies and gentlemen, we've seen that the ones who ran away last week was Muhammad Ali. Twice. And we see the one who runs away this week is Muhammad Ali. Again. He needs to change his name to Cassius Clay. Because all that talk about being a man is seen to be nothing but pottery. Nothing but pottery. The Dawa team are running. You say it yourselves. Let's see if we can, let's go back. I know someone who won't run. No. Where is Nasan? Where? Where? Hey, Nasan. How are you, sir? Happy Eid. Are you having a good celebration? Um, that is going to be Wednesday or Thursday. Oh, right. I thought it was today. Uh, today is the last weekend. Okay. I, I, BBC has misinformed me tremendously this morning. Uh, Maybe we speak another time. Okay. Yes, of course, if, you, if you're in the middle. Of, okay, he, he doesn't want to have the conversation. Paul doesn't want to have the conversation. Muhammad Ali doesn't want to have the conversation. Abbas, would you like to have a conversation? I got a question. I got a question. It's about the Quran. Happy Eid, by the way. Shall we talk over here? No, it depends what's the topic. So the topic is about whether this is the word of Allah or not. Yeah, which verse is that again? The, the, the Arabic. I don't bring my glasses there. Eh? It's okay, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. What's your eyes there? Uh, well, we're looking at Surah 20, yeah. but it's not really about Surah 20. It's about the entirety of the Arabic Quran. Okay. Yeah. So it's a very simple question. Yeah. Is this the speech of Allah? Uh, so, yeah. that, so, so, so that one too? Uh, How about the no, one no, no, not no, on no, my no, phone? No. This is not Quran. This, this is, is not a Quran. This? It's okay, bro. I, yeah, I understand, bro. Yeah, yes, yeah. you can extrapolate the arguments, but, but I, just, I, I just want to give him a fair chance. If we all start it's throwing it. questions at Abbas, it's not fair. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So, Quran is a revelation of Allah from, so from Allah. From Allah. It's the revelation. Is from it Allah. the speech of Allah? Yes, it came to Jibril and yep. from Jibril to Muhammad Okay. Yes. Yes. So it is the speech of Allah that's come from Jibril to the heart of Muhammad and then Muhammad to everyone else. Yes. Right. Yes. Is the speech of Allah created? Speech of Allah is created. Yes. The speech of Allah is yes. created. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. Time, there's a time where Allah speaks. Yeah. There's a time when Allah speaks. So when you talk about the Quran, yeah. if I, I already told you, the Quran is created. There's a time when the Quran doesn't exist. And okay. There's a time when the Quran exists. Right. My 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 understanding is the same as Mutazalites. Okay. I told you before. Yes, yes, yes. I believe Quran is a time and space when the Quran doesn't exist. Right. And there's a time when the Quran exists. So if there is a time when the Quran doesn't exist, nope. does the speech of Allah therefore have a beginning? No. No. The speech of Allah always exists. Yes. But if you are implying the Quran is the first time Allah ever spoke, that's what you're misunderstanding. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quran has yeah. been, Allah has been speaking, His speech will be there forever. Right. Always. Brilliant. But there was a time when Allah spoke about the Quran, the, when the Quran became Quran. Fair enough. What's the meaning of Quran? Something. A recitation. recitation. Yes, 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 yes. So yes. it cannot exist until it's recited. So, can the, since we've agreed, okay, I'm, I'm going to deal with Abbas as a Mutazilite. I'm not going to argue with him like he's a Salafi. 
or an Ashari. I'm, I'm not Salafi. I know you're not. I know, I'm, I'm not saying I'm you are. Muslim. Uh, yeah, I'm getting a bit, but you've, you've identified yourself as agreeing with the Mutasilites. And this concept, uh, with the That's Muslim fine, that's fine. And, and, and I, I don't need to tell you, obviously, there's lots of Muslims that consider Mutasilites to be deviants. Yes. They yeah, did. yeah, okay. Uh, humble did as well. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, so my, my, I'm, but I'm going to deal with your argument as you've presented it. Yeah. So, we agree, you, you believe that this is created, yeah. that it exists in a moment in time. That's right. Has this has, uh, but it, it remains an attribute of Allah, doesn't it? Can you define what do you mean by that? That which is a part of Allah that Allah could be without. That's the speech of Allah, not the Quran. Yeah, the speech of Allah. Yeah, not the Quran. But the Quran is an exemplar of the speech of Allah. Yes. The speech of Allah exists always. The Quran doesn't exist always. I, so I, I get that. I get that. I'm not. I'm not arguing that. I am working with your argument. That's right, yeah. I just want to make sure I get all my ducks in a row. Yeah. Okay. So if the speech of Allah as eternal, uncreated, existed forever, yes. and then from that speech the Quran, which is an exemplar of Allah's speech, is created, yes. begins at a moment in time. Yes, right. Is it fair to, for me to say that the attribute of Allah's speech in the example of the Quran has entered into creation? Yes, but, the, but if you're implying that Quran is eternal... That no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Yeah. I'm, I'm working with your yeah, argument. Yeah, yeah. I'm not strawmanning you. Yeah. You've already identified yourself as a different group of Muslims. I'm working with that argument. So if we agree that Allah's, Allah's attribute of speech in the example of the Quran has entered into creation, then it is possible for Allah to enter into creation. Of course it's possible for Allah Great. to enter into creation. Nowhere it says Quran or Hadith that Allah cannot enter his creation. But would he? That's right. the question. Okay. Would he? Yeah. And if he do, if would, why would he? Yeah. There must be a purpose and reason why would he? Yes. Allah will enter creation. I so totally we not, agree. We do not believe that Allah entered the creation. Yep. Yeah. But his attributes speech does yep. enter the creation in the form of Quran. Yeah. Okay. So today, for the first time I think ever in four years, I've met two Muslims that agree that Allah can enter into his creation. Right? That, that's the first. I told you that years ago, we had the same... Uh, we, we had this talk I, over I, there, I, I remember. That if Allah can, I honestly... Who, who say Allah cannot enter creation if he, if he wants to, but why would he? Fair enough, Abbas. That's the question. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a good question. It's a fair question. But I never read in the Quran or Hadith that Allah cannot enter his creation. Great. That's the scholars are saying that. Great. Yeah, so we're all agreed God can enter creation. What we disagree on is whether he would or he wouldn't. And this cuts to the heart. One you second. One, wait, 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 wait. Allah Abbas, Abbas. Allah has power Abbas, over everything. everything. Yeah, that's fine. Allah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. So he has yeah. the power over everything. Yeah. By saying he Abbas. cannot do this and cannot do that, Great. will not be right. Exactly. Exactly. Which is the logic that the other Muslim used. Brilliant. At least you're on the same page. So the point is, the question is, would he? And we cut to the heart of Christian theology and Islamic theology. The difference between our concepts of God. Because the concept of God that we Christians have is of a God of love, as you know. And for that reason, God enters into his creation to show his solidarity with his creation from a place of love. Now, explain to me from an Islamic theological perspective, what is, the, what is it that motivates Allah to enter into his creation? I think what you're doing is, you Christians, you are limiting God and we are not. What you are limiting God, that God cannot communicate with his creation without entering it. We Muslims say that he is so powerful, without entering his creation, he is able to communicate with us. He can do whatever without coming to us. Or you saying he, he cannot, if I'm, if I'm getting wrong. I don't, I'm not saying that. So, but what do you say he entered the creation, why? So, the first thing that I'm saying to you, and the first thing I'm saying to all my brothers and sisters, is that we believe that God can obviously communicate without entering into his creation. Okay? We're not saying that he has to enter into his creation to communicate. What we are saying, what we are saying is that because our vision of God is so radically different from the vision that, of, that Muslims have of their God, or at least other Muslims, because you are kind of different, Abbas, that... Be that, a good thing or a bad thing. Well, I'll let other Muslims decide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, personally, I personally can get on with you. Okay, like, the, the, the idea of our God is a God of love. A God who actually is involved, well, let me finish. I don't think so. One second, is involved in his creation and he's willing to enter into it. But what I lack to see, what I cannot see in Islamic theology is any raison d'etre why the God you believe in 
would enter into the material world by sending a Quran, his speech, into the material world. What is it that motivates him to do that? Okay, first of all, now you wanted to ask I, I, I a question. I let you get away with it by keep saying that God is love. Your God is love. It's literally he, what he, the he Bible keep, says. God also say he hate all the sinners. Yeah. All the workers of iniquity. Ah. So yeah, by by default, since you Christians believe every single human being is a sinner, you agree? Yes. Apart from Jesus, Jesus yes. Every single be human being is a sinner. So by default, since everyone is a sinner and God hate all sinners, meaning God hate everyone. According to your theology, because Psalm chapter 5, verse 5 says he ate all the sinners. So stop saying that. Which, that God, which, which passage, God, please? God, loves, God is love. Chapter 5, verse 5, Psalms 5, 5 says he hate all the workers of iniquity. So stop saying that the God. Uh, are you trying to help him or what? Why is she trying to help you? No, I'm, ha I'm having a talk. Okay, it's all right, love. Okay, it's last all right. Last week you ran from me, Kay. You ran from me last week. week. You can't just speak from the crowd there. Okay, the anyway. okay. And stop saying that the God is love. Your God is not love because he he punished the children of the parents up to the tenth generation. This is not loving God. I mean, I mean, there are many examples in the Bible which shows us the God of the Bible is anything but love. Okay. So can I can I reply to that, Abbas? Okay, yeah, go on. Then. So he's quoted he's quoted Psalm five verse five, which reads, "The boastful shall not stand before your eyes." You hate all who do iniquity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what makes, what is the, the thing that makes God hate them? The sin. It is the sin that yeah. they do. Yeah. He doesn't hate them because they don't believe, as the Quran God, says. The Quran that says, he hates you until you believe in him and does what he tells you to so do. Who does he hate? Which is what the Quran. Who does he hate? Those who do iniquity. Okay, who are they? So it is and their iniquity. Abbas, did I interrupt you? So why are you interrupting me? You know where that leads. It just leads to a shouting match. Please calm down. Please calm down. Please calm down. But the Bible also says that whilst we were yet sinners, God sent forth his son into the world. So God is saying that whilst we were sinners, he has sent his son into the world for its salvation. Does that sound like someone who hates you because you're a sinner? or someone that hates the sin that you do. Why bother to save those that you hate? Clearly doesn't work like that. Because he's saying, you're sinners, I hate your sin, but I'm going to save you in any case. Perfect. By comparison, what does the Quran say? The Quran says you have to believe and you have to do righteous good deeds with the right intentions. But the problem with that is that Muslims do good deeds and try to do the right things in the right ways because they're hoping that God will reward them with paradise. Is that true? Is that true? That Muslims, that the Quran teaches you to be saved, you have to believe and do at least the five pillars of Islam with good intentions. Is that right? Does it say the five pillars? You have to do five pillars of Islam. It teaches the five pillars. Do righteous deeds. It said do righteous deeds. Uh, the Those who do righteous deeds, they will be in paradise. That's what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. Are you saying? Are you saying that you can get into heaven without doing the five pillars? No, I'm not. The, you are putting like that. I'm asking you. Righteous deeds, of course. Righteous deeds, not more than five pillars. Yes. That's, that's not only five pillars as well. It's more than five pillars. Let, you're let me, missing my argument. Let, let me first of all come back. To you, you're going to miss no, my no, argument. But I want to reply okay. to Psalm five five. Yeah. So what you show me? One verse, Psalm five five. It says. I'll read it again for, for people who didn't pay attention. The boastful may not stand before the eyes. Thou hatest all evil doers. Now this verse is very clear. God hate all evil doers. Okay? Now you show me the verse which says otherwise God sent somebody for the sinners. At best, this is a contradiction in the Bible. Because one verse is clear that he hate all the sinners. The other verse says God is helping the sinners, sending to help sinners. So it's a contradiction. But when I said God hate all sinners, and you Christians believe every human being done sin, so by default God hate all of you. So stop saying that God is love. That's my point here. So if you bring something contradictory, that's the problem with your Bible. You have to deal with it. Don't come with us. Okay, this is the worst. Don't pick and choose. But boy, I just show you God hate all evil doers. Now your question is, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
On the contrary, actually, Allah loves all the kind people. There's a verses in the Quran again, again. You want me to show you? I have to find. Okay. Allah loves the kind. Okay. Allah loves the. I will. I, I will. I did not blaspheme the spirit. Abbas, focus on me, bro. Can you tell another to interfere? I literally just have. Quran again and again says, Allah loves the righteous. Allah loves the humble. Allah loves the good people. Allah loves the kind people. And, and there's more than that. If are you telling me you are not good, you are not righteous, you are not humble, you are not even kind. Do you deserve the love of God if you are not even kind? That's what my God is. He loves even the kind. So my, my God loves everyone. But of course, he is just as well. If you are evil, he will punish you and he is not going to love you. Why would he love the evil? It's not fair. You either love good or you love evil. So Allah does not love the evil. So you are on the evil side, he will not love you. But my God is all loving in, in every way. His name is Al Budud. Al Budud means the loving. So stop playing this game about love, love, love. You can brainwash people who does not have a knowledge of enough knowledge of Bible. But your Bible is clear that your God is anything Wait, 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 bro. It's all right. Because if he, if he is loving, why would he punish the children whose parents are sinners and he, he will punish them up to the fourth generation? One place it up to tenth generation. Abbas. What kind of a God is that loving Abbas. the children for the sins? Allow me to reply. Allow me to reply. No, I haven't finished yet. What kind of a God is is loving that your parents don't sin, but he's punishing you for 10 generations? I don't we call. Don't, don't I don't call this love. Okay. So stop playing this game. Abbas, all right. So Abbas went on for a long time there and notice that I didn't interrupt him. Let's did, see, actually. let's see you towards the end to try and speed you up. Okay, so so let's see, let's see if Abbas, just for once, if I can actually talk to Abbas without it ending in a shouting match. I will, I promise. The scriptures say, for while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. What is a worker of an iniquity except for ungodly? For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps a good man, someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Beloved, in 1 John, chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So there's what the Bible teaches. Now, does love mean that you love sin? No. God does not love the workers of iniquity. But he demonstrates he doesn't love sin. He demonstrates his love for sinners in that he gives of salvation freely of his own accord. Now I know that Abbas did not address my question. He said that Allah loves you if you believe and do good deeds. I said he misunderstood the point that I was making to him. Because what I was saying to him is, can you be saved if you don't do the five pillars of Islam? I'm not saying that you can do more other good deeds. I'm saying, are you excluded from salvation if you don't do the pillars of Islam? And he says in the Quran that Allah loves everyone who is good. I'd like to see the verse where Allah says that he loves everybody who does good. But notice what that means. It means that the love is conditional. Now notice the guy that didn't want to debate is wanting to contribute. Let, just, let him just change the memory card. Let it just wait in front and wait in front. So my question is clear. My question is not can you do more righteous deeds than the five pillars. My question is if you don't do the five pillars, like you don't do your salat, are you saved? just because you say that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the Prophet of Allah? That's my question. And here's the other part of the question. Because there are three conditions to salvation in Islam. One, that you believe. Two, that you do righteous good deeds. And three, you do those righteous good deeds with right intentions. I want to know. Is that what you need for salvation in Islam, Abbas? Yes or no? And don't just say verses, show us the verses. 
Where does it say that Allah loves anyone who does good things? I want to see that verse, like I showed you in the Bible. So, over to you, Abbas. Which one you want to show me? The, because I have to pick up the verses for the good. Uh, Allah loves good. Shall I show you the verses? I want you or to show me... Answer this question about... The one, the verse, here's the verse. I want you to show me a verse where Allah says He loves anyone who does good. Okay, here we are. Okay, what verse? Chapter 3, verse 134 says this. Who wait, spend? Wait. Chapter 3, verse 134. Verse. Who spend during ease and hardship? And who restrain anger, talk about the Muslims, and who pardon people, who forgive people. And Allah loves the doers of good. Is that what you're asking for? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let you make it. I'll have many more actually. Okay. Is that what you're asking for? Show me where Allah says Allah loves the doers of good. So notice what the condition he put in, which is an accurate condition to the Quran, talking to the Muslims. So it's not about whether you just do good, it's about whether you also believe in Islam. So very different, not what he no, said no, it no, was. No, 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 sorry. This verse is talking... Well, is it talking, talking to the talking Muslims? It's talking about human beings in general. It's not, it's not about Muslims, it's talking about human beings in general. Surah so sure 3. Yeah, I did say that Muslims... Surah so 3, 131. He's addressing human being in general. Chapter 3, verse 134. You can see the context of... Surah so 3, 134. Yes. Okay, go on. Uh, who spend during ease and hardship, and who restrain anger, and who pardon people, and Allah loves the doers of good. You see the conditions Allah says? Who restrain their anger, forgive people, and do good things, even ease and hardship. Allah loves the doers of good. And I'll, there's another place Allah says, Allah also, um, okay. Allah also loves the steadfast and humble as well. There are many verses, okay. Another verse about the love of God. Uh, can somebody find where Allah says, Allah loves the kind? There's a, another verse that Allah loves the kind. And chapter, chapter 3, verse 146, same surah. And how many a prophet? With him fought many religious scholars, but they never lost assurance due to what uh, affli afflicted them in the cause of Allah. Nor did they weaken or submit. And Allah loved the steadfast. So you are, if you are a steadfast person, Allah loves. There's no condition putting you have to be a Muslim or whatever. Allah loves the doers of good. But there's a verse in the Quran, I just can't find it, but it's definitely there. That Allah loves the kind. Is that the answer to your question? Right, so the answer is no. Because if you go to verse Surah 3, verse 130, listen to the words. Oh, you who believe. Mm -hmm. Who's that talking to? Muslims. Muslims. Okay. So Abbas literally tried to dupe me. He thought I wouldn't read the verse before it. <laughs> it says, listen, yeah. oh, you who believe. Who are those who believe? Muslims, yeah. Muslims yeah, right, yeah. eat not usury, yeah. doubled and multiplied, but fear Allah that you may be successful mm -hmm. and fear the fire which is prepared for the disbelievers. Keep, 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 oh, keep and obey Allah and the messenger that you may obtain mercy. Now listen, you believe and you obey that you may obtain mercy mm -hmm. and march forth in the way um, which leads to forgiveness from your Lord and for paradise as wide as are the heavens and the earth prepared for the uh, al muttakun which is the pious. For the righteous, yes. Those who spend in Allah's cause in prosperity and in adversity, who repress anger and who pardon men verily, Allah loves the good doers. So what it's saying is, O oh Muslim, no, 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 one second. Abbas, I did not interrupt you. Abbas, Abbas, I sim. This always does this. Abbas is misquoting his own text. And because he practices taqiyya, that's what he's doing right now. He thought I wouldn't read the bit that made the distinction between those who believe and those who disbelieve. And then it says those who believe do these things, forgive spend of your riches to help the poor, do righteous good deeds. So he has established for me from his own passages that the Quran teaches that you have to believe and you have to do good deeds and you have to do them with sincerity, which means that in Islam, Allah's love for you is conditional, not unconditional like in the Bible, where our God gives this brother the opportunity for forgiveness, even though he's a Muslim. Yes. And to Abbas, even though he's a Muslim. Yes. It requires nothing of you except acceptance. Abbas, okay, your return, your reply. So, okay, let's say, 
for the sake of argument, let's say for the sake of argument, this chapter 3 verse 134 is addressing Muslims. The, now are you saying that your Bible teaches you that you should love or God, your God loves the disbelievers? Is that what your Bible says? Just answer yes or no quickly, then I'll make my point. Are you saying that your God loves the disbelievers? God loves sinners. Huh? God loves sinners. But God says he doesn't. Chapter Psalms 5.5 5 is very clear. He hates all the doers of iniquity. So according to you, Muslims are the doers of iniquity, are we not? According so am I. Yeah, Jews are, and Jews as well, and Hindus. Everybody, so according we're to all sinners. So, all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God. So according to your Bible, God hates all of us. He hates all of us. Actually, He hates you as well. So in the Quran, at least He, hates, he loves Muslims, those who are good ones. So oh, he admits it now. According, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not admitting I'm saying according to you. Even if say Quran loves only the Muslims who are the good ones, according to Bible, God hates even you. So, I mean, you can't just throw stones if you're living in a glass glass house. You can't just do that because you just destroy your own argument. Your God hates everybody. Actually, he's unjust as well. That's another, another main thing as well. Okay, can I, can I reply to that? Because Abbas has, has said that the, the God of the Bible hates the doers of iniquity. But you've got to read the Bible in its entirety for its full context. This is why we Christians have this concept of hating the sin and loving the sinner. Yes. Because that's what our God does. He hates the doers of iniquity is what the Bible says. So it's because of the sin that they, that they incur God's judgment. Psalm 5 is talking about judgment. It's talking about, it's looking forward to the end of the world. I will show you. But the point, in fact, we'll just go to it. Let's just show him. Think about these words. Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my groaning. Hear the sound of my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray. In the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will order my prayer to you and eagerly watch. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness. Amen. Listen to in context. No evil dwells with you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. Mm. So it's talking about judgment. Yeah. It's talking about because we Christians, we Christians believe that at the time of judgment, you will stand before God Amen. and sin cannot stand in the presence of God. That's very Christian teaching. Amen. You hate all who do iniquity. You destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the man of bloodshed and deceit. But as for me, by your abundant loving kindness, notice, by your loving kindness, not my good deeds, I will enter your house. Where is the house of the Lord except in heaven? Psalm 5 is a psalm about judgment day. It's about the end of time. And that's why God says he hates those who do iniquity because they will be judged. It's a shame Abbas didn't read this passage in context like he read the passage in the Quran out of context. How would you like to reply? It's pulling on people's eyes right now. It has nothing to do with the judgment. It's just, it's just basing the fact what is, going to, what is happening, what, what your nature is and how you deal with people. It's nothing to do with the date of judgment. I challenge you, show me one scholar is saying that Psalm 5 is talking about the day of judgment. N.T. Wright. Yeah. Sorry, just show me. Show me the scholar that says that. Uh, do you have any commentary? Any yeah, yeah, we'll find the Yeah, we can get you the commentary. This is talking about God's nature, what God does. He's talking about even the temple. The next verse is talking about the temple. The temple of God. Just Psalm 5, but judgment I, Psalm. through the abundance of the steadfast love, will enter thy house. I will worship toward the holy temple in the fear of thee. So he's talking about in this world. He's going all over. The, the David is talking about the God's nature and how I worship. He has nothing to do with the day of judgment because he mentioned that no one will stand in front of you. Yes, that's true. On the day of judgment, no one will stand. That doesn't mean he's talking about day of judgment. He's just saying how God works. And on top of that, actually, there's a many verses. Tell me how God loves you when the God punish you for the sins of your parents. What kind of a love is that? What kind of a love is that that your parents done sin, but you have to pay for that? I don't find that love. But on top of that, you know, Jesus himself, Jesus himself says, hate your parents, hate your mother, hate your father, hate your children, hate your wife, hate your brother, hate your sisters, and even hate yourself if you want to be my disciple. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Jesus is telling you to hate your parents. Now you Here's will say, 
you will say that's a, that's a metaphor, or that's hyperbole language. But Jesus used that language of hate. You're not listening to me. So your Jesus himself in Luke 14, 26 says, hate your parents, hate your mother, hate your father. So what is that if, if God is so loved, why Jesus is telling you to hate your mother and hate your father? So this has nothing to do with judgment. I want to see the commentary which scholars say this is he's talking about the day of judgment. I just want to show you again why Psalm 5 is about the judgment. Listen to verse 11. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Do you have eternal life in this world or in the next? next. How can you sing forever with joy in this world? It is in the next world. Psalm 5 is about judgment, Abbas. You just don't know the Psalms because all you did is read a pamphlet. One second, I, mean, I haven't finished. All you're doing, all you're doing is reading a pamphlet or a website rather than picking up the Bible and studying it. But let's look at the Quran. Because you Muslims, you mu no Abbas, don't interrupt. Don't interrupt, Abbas. I don't want to don't interrupt. Point. Always with a bass. This is how it ends. No, I don't want to change the point. It always ends like this with a bass. It yeah. always ends like this. It just ends up a shouting match. Try to control yourself, a bass, just for I once. Just, just for once, a bass. Just I once. Yeah. So. I did that to him as well. So. In Surah 19, this is Allah's love for the Muslims. You're all going to hell anyway. Following Islam. Following Islam doesn't get you out of hell. Allah's going to punish you. Here's what it says. Surah 19, Ayah 71 and 72. There is not one of you, not one of you, but will pass over it, hell. This is with your Lord, the decree which must be accomplished. Then we shall save those who used to fear Allah and we're dutiful to him. So you're going to hell, Muslims. And we shall leave the polytheists and the wrongdoers therein, humbled to their knees in hell. So where is Allah's mercy if he's going to punish you for your sins? What is mercy? Mercy is, you did wrong, but I'm not going to punish you. That's mercy. But Allah has no mercy even for the Muslims. They're all going to hell for their sin. But Allah will take them out of hell and leave the polytheists in hell. So they're still going to be punished for their sin. So that's not mercy. It is justice. I'll give Allah that. It is justice. So really and truly, Allah shouldn't be in the, shouldn't say in the Quran, in the name of Allah, the most magnificent, the most merciful, it should say, in the name of Allah, the most magnificent, the most just. Because there is no mercy for, from Allah to this Muslim or to Abbas. They're both going to hell to be punished for their sin. No mercy, no forgiveness. Allah says you're going to hell, bro. Deal with it. It's the third lecture you give on this uh, uh, debate. It's supposed to be a one-to-one. -one. Okay, um, let me answer your first question. You, went, you say about the ever. Psalms chapter 5 verse 11 says, and ever they will be worshipping God. I'm paraphrasing. Is that right? Yeah? Psalms 5 verse 11 says, you use the word ever, forever. Now if ever means it has to be in the hereafter, because ever means eternal, then remember what God says to Abraham. Today I'm going to give, giving you this covenant of, uh, what do you call it, um, you know, a, when sunnah, yeah. a covenant. Covenant, yeah. what's the covenant? When he's circumcised. Yeah. The, the covenant, covenant of circumcision, yep. to Abraham, God said, This is my covenant with you and your descendants for circumcision for of the heart. Ever. Hmm. For ever. Listen, heart. listen to listen, Are you not paying attention here? I'm listening. We talk about the word ever, use the word ever. So he said, My covenant with you and your descendants for ever. So if ever only means eternal life, Abraham is his descendants were in this world, yet God used the word ever. So whenever the word used ever doesn't mean eternal life, meaning as long as you live in this world, ever can be used as well. That's the answer to your question. Now, now you earlier said, you know, we Christians, when we read our Bible, we read intertextually. That's what you're trying to say. We read the whole Bible to understand the message of the Bible. But when you read the Quran, do you do the same thing with the Quran? 
Do you understand the Quran intertextually as well? No, I don't think so because chapter 19 verse 71, 72 it says, and there is none of you except he, we, we, he will come to it. This is upon your Lord and inevitability decreed. There we will save those who fear Allah and leave the wrongdoers with, within it on their knees. Now, do you read the other passages in the Quran? Let's talk about the hell and the believers. I want to take you to chapter 21 and we go verse 101. It says there, this, Indeed those for whom the best has proceeded from us, they are from it far removed. From it what? If you read the context, talking about the hell. They are from it far removed. They will not even hear its sound. What it says, chapter 21 verse 102, they will not even hear its sound, let alone going over it. You will be far removed from it and you will not even hear its sound. And it says, while they are in that which their souls desire abiding eternally, they will be in paradise for believers. I wish, I, I hope I will be in paradise. I don't know. Allah knows. So I, those people in paradise, they will not even hear hell, let alone going on over it. So you need to understand Quran intertextually. That chapter 19, verse 70 and 71 is talking about the disbelievers and those people who are not totally righteous people. From among them, they will go over the hell and among them, some Allah will save from them as well. But remember the believers Allah is talking about in chapter 21. They will not, they will be far removed from hell and they will not even hear its sound. So your understanding is wrong that every Muslim will be going over, over the bridge. Quran says otherwise as well. Actually, there's another verse I can show you as well. Uh, which, which backed my claim. You want to say anything about that? Okay, so he said that I have not listened to the Quran. Well, Muslims believe that Muhammad interprets the Quran in his hadiths. So listen to what the hadiths say. So this is Muhammad. It's a very long hadith. It's narrated by Abu Sayyid al-Qudri. However, I'm not going to read it all because it will take up too much time. So I'm going to read the bit that, that, that I think is most relevant. You Muslims cannot be more pressing in claiming from me a right that has been clearly proved to be yours that the believers in interceding with the Almighty for their Muslim brothers on the day, on the day, when they see themselves safe, they will say, O oh Allah, save our brothers, for they used to pray with us, fast with us, also do good deeds with us. Allah will say, go and take out of hell. You hear that? Go and take out of hell. Anyone in whose heart you find faith equal to the weight of one gold dinar, Allah will forbid the fire to burn the faces of those sinners. They will go to, go to them and find some of them in hell fire and will take out those whom they will recognize and then they will return. Now let me ask every Muslim who can hear my voice. How much faith do you think you have? How much time do you think you're going to spend in hell? Because the Quran says you're going to hell and the Hadith say you're going to hell. The point is that if hell is, if hell is awaiting you, as promised by the Quran, not one of you it says, and the Quran says, the Hadith say that you pass over this bridge at different speeds and you enter through hell at different speeds. And depending on how much deen and imam you have, you pass through the lake of fire, some quicker than others. So you're all going to burn, all of you. Every one of you is going to burn. And why? Because Allah is not the most magnificent, the most merciful. He's the most magnificent, the most just. There is no mercy in your God that awaits you. You have got duped by a contradictory book. And if I'm wrong, Abbas, just explain to me how mercy involves punishing you for your sin rather than forgiving you for your sin. Mercy means this brother's done wrong and Allah says, in my mercy, I wipe away your sin. Justice says you did sin to the weight of an atom I punish you to the weight of an atom. That is what the Quran and the Hadiths have promised you. Hellfire and me, hellfire. But I stay there and you come out of it. The reality is that ain't mercy, it's judgment. 
So he ain't Allah the most magnificent, the most merciful. He's Allah the most magnificent, the most just. So Abbas points out another verse. It contradicts the verse and the hadiths. Should I believe the hadiths given by Muhammad or should I believe Abbas here in the park? Who's right? Okay. Anyway, Abbas and Ibn Abbas, Abbas, they both are wrong. No, hang on a minute. What, what I was going to say is, uh, you did, so you say this is, okay, you say this verse is contradict. But you did say when I show you point out the contradiction in the Bible, one place God says God hates all the evildoers, other place say God loves all the sinners. Now, is that not a contradiction? You say that's not a contradiction. That's how you understand the, the scripture. In inter, intertextual study, you use the whole scripture you need to understand to understand the meaning. But when it comes to the Quran, you're calling it a contradiction. It's not a contradiction. Quran is clear the believers, the, they will not hear this sound and they will be far removed from it. But the one Allah says, the one going above that the hell, above the bridge, he's not talking about the believers there. You need to read the whole context. And I'm going to read chapter 19 from verse 66. You read from verse 70 to 71. But what Allah says in from verse 66? And the disbelievers say, when I have died, am I going to be brought forth alive? Does, does man not remember that we created him before while he was nothing? So by your Lord, we will surely gather them. Who is he talking about here? He's talking about those who are not righteous people. Among them, they are disbelievers or the sinners. Allah is talking about them. Them doesn't mean all every human being. He's talking about the context, those who are not righteous people. So by your Lord, we will surely gather them and the devils. Then we will bring them to be present around hell upon their knees. Then we will surely extract from every sect those of them who were worse against the most merciful in insolence. Talk about the sinners. So you have to experience hell. Yeah? You have to experience hell. That's what your book just said. No, no, he's talking about the sinners. It's not, he's not talking about the righteous people. What he just said is you have to experience hell then to come out. Sinners. No, he's talking about the sinners. Are you a sinner, Bas? If I'm a right, no. Are you a no. sinner? If Allah knows. Are Allah, you a sinner? If Allah knows. Are you a no, sinner? No, 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 no. No, our concept of sin is not the same as Christianity. Allah says, anyone who repents from this sin, who can forgive sin other than Allah? That's the verse of the Quran as well. So Allah, all we need to do is to repent and Allah forgives sins. This is how we call merciful God. When you repent, this is what he requires. You repent and he forgives. That's exactly what Christians do. You say Jesus died for our sins, but what do you need to do? Repent. You said repent, even though he died for your sins, but you need to repent from your sins. So then he then he is merciful and he forgives you. Same way. So here he's talking about the sinners. He's not talking about the righteous. Remember Allah says they will not even hear the sound of it. They'll be far removed from it. That's how we understand the Quran is an intellectual study. When you bring the hadith, if anything, Hadith, Bible, anything contradict Quran, what we do? We leave that you behind check the hadiths or the we know. Or we understand Hadith through Quran. Then we understand that the Hadith is talking about the sinners here. It's not talking about everybody. We need to understand Hadith in its spiritual way, in its metaphor way, and not literal way. Because anything goes against the Quran, we leave it. Even if it says the Sahih Hadith. This is how our criteria. Last question you ask, you say something else as well. Can Quran. I reply to that? Okay. So yeah. let me reply. So, guys, it isn't me that directed you to this hadith by Al Qudri. This is the scholars from Saudi Arabia Al Medina University. Now, who do you believe more, Abbas <laughs> or the scholars from Medina University who point you to a verse, who point you to a hadith that says that the Muslims are going to hell? It literally says. You Muslims cannot be pressing in a claim from me, a right that has been clearly proved to be yours, that the believers in interceding with the Almighty for their Muslim brothers on the day. So it's talking about you, and it's saying that you're going to be dragged out of hell. So you're going to hell, is what the Quran is saying. Let me finish. Let me finish. Abbas, I didn't interrupt you. Always, we do this, Abbas. No, let me finish. Let me finish. Abbas, I didn't interrupt you. Please, just for once, try to control yourself. I remember, I forgot to answer the question about the So, Abbas, please. I need to answer the question. Please, please. The Quran says in Surah 4, Ayah 40, surely Allah runs not even of the weight of an atom or small ant 
but if there is any good done, he doubles it and gives from him a great reward. So he's going to punish you sin for sin. An atom's weight of sin is going to be your punishment. And he's going to pull you out according to how much Imam you have in your heart. A dinar's weight, an atom's weight. He's going to pull you out. I don't believe that Abbas thinks that he's sinless. In fact, Abbas has already told me that he used to drink alcohol. I'm sure he's changed and he's a reformed Muslim. But that's a sin. Well, according to the Quran, he's going to feel that in hell. And I bet these two Muslims have sinned as well, but they know their own heart. Of course, he says. So these Muslims are going to hell, according to the Quran. There you go, they're going to hell. So where is the mercy of Allah? Where's the mercy of Allah? If Allah is going to punish you for your sin, where is his mercy? Let's just clarify this question. What does mercy mean? Give me an example of mercy. Let me answer the first question. You, you, talk, you uh, talked about the scholars here. So you, you say the Saudi scholars have printed this and they say this is the hadith. They give a hadith. Yeah, now, narrated by okay. look, look, now, Abu Sayyid okay. al-Qudri. Now, your understanding is this. We Muslims are binding by the scholars. That's what you're understanding. Let's go to the Quran, what Quran talks about. So are we binded by the scholars or we should follow them? Are they our hujjah? Chapter 4, verse 59 says this. O you who have believed, obey Allah and obey the messenger. And those in authority among you. So it's authority, your leaders are your scholars among you. What the rest of the reverse says. And if you disagree over anything, uh, over anything, refer it to Allah and His Messenger. Meaning, if I'm allowed by the Quran, I'm allowed to disagree with scholars and leaders. But I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed to disagree with Allah and His Messenger. So, by the criteria of a Quran, I can, with respect, say you are a scholar. But you, since you are a human being and you are not divinely, uh, divinely helped, so you can be right. You can be wrong. So scholars, we Muslims can disagree. They are now our hujjah. Our hujjah is the Quran. And uh, the question I want to come back to about the pulling. But pulling from the hell. Yes. yes. No Muslim says that every Muslim is going to go paradise. Of course not. But we say Muslims going to go paradise, straight to paradise. According to the Quran, they will not even hear it. They will be far removed from it. But of course, there are many Muslims who are there. They are Muslim, but they fall into sin. They do murder. They do all kind of a bad things. But since they are a Muslim, but they will be in hell. Now, that hadith is talking about the other Muslims who will be in paradise. They will be praying to God, Ya Allah, help them. They are our brothers. So Allah's mercy says, yes, they were in hell. Take Allah's mercy, take those Muslims out of hell. It doesn't say every Muslim is in hell. No, no. Otherwise, which those Muslim? Who have a good Other, friend. Otherwise, those who have otherwise, friend. I've got him. I've got him. He's hung himself. Otherwise, have good friend, they other, will be taken. Uncle, he's hung himself. I've got him. He's hung himself. What kind of a Muslims are in paradise telling Allah to take them out of hell? Of course, obviously, they're not. And then we know the hadith as well. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, he will be the first one to enter paradise. He say, I will go to the door. I will bring that hadith if you want. I'll go to the door and the angel asks, who are you? And I say, I'm Muhammad. And the angel says, you are the one who I'm told to open the door before anybody else. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi will be the first one to enter paradise before any human being, any prophet or anyone. Mm -hmm. So we, that hadith is talking about those sinners, he those Muslims, those Muslims. And sin. look, and there's the words of the Quran says, if you sin, do not be, uh, do not be, uh, of the word I'm forgetting, discouraged by the mercy of God. Allah forgive any sin. Just what you do is repent. So yes, I am a sinner. Yes, my brothers probably are sinners. I never say I'm not, I'm not a sinner. What I'm saying is, am I going to end up on a clean sheet? This is up to Allah. If, if I ask Allah repent today, a sincere repentance, I, and I believe in this. If I sincerely repent to God and I die now, I, my sins, all sins are wiped off because according to the Quran. But if I repent and not a sin again, this depend, depend on how life goes. So yes, we do sin. But our slate will be clean when we totally repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And end of the day, we will enter the paradise, not because of our deeds, but by His mercy. So you yes, are better no, than we Muhammad. Can, we cannot earn paradise. It's the mercy better of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because yeah. I cannot pay the price of these eyes, the mercy. That Allah has given, blessed me with these eyes. I can't whole life, I will pray or do ibadah. I can't pay the price of my speech or my eyes. 
So at the end of the day, this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're going to go to paradise. But yes, we, we can be sinners and we can be clean, uh, clean slate at the end of the day. Okay. I address all your questions. So, so, so here's the point. Let me, let me just change the battery. Slowly. So I am happy to concede. I'm happy to concede the point about that some Muslims will enter paradise and not go through hell. Because that's what the text says. Listen carefully. When it says this is passing over the bridge that's over hell. It says that some will pass over like a strong wind or fast horses or she camels. So some will be safe without any harm. Some will be safe after receiving some scratches. Maybe that's you Abbas. And some will fall down into hell fire. Some will fall down into hell fire. So, so let's be clear. Where is the mercy of Allah? The mercy of Allah is not there for those he sends to hell. There is no salvation for those people. They have been sent to hell and they are burning in hell. So the mercy of Allah is not for them. So the vision of God that we have, if we do intertextualism, and I want to remind Abbas, these are scholars of Medina University. I'd like to know his qualifications for disagreeing with them. Dr. Muhammad Taki Uddin Al Hilali and Dr. Muhammad Mushin Khan of Islamic University Al Medina Al Munawara. Probably mispronounced that last one. Yeah. Now, these Muslims have given this hadith, and this hadith states very clearly, very clearly, that there are Muslims who are going to hell, and it is the majority of Muslims, and that's the problem. That is the problem that he doesn't get. If Allah is punishing those Muslims for their sin, then where is his mercy? He is not the most merciful. That's judgment. And now notice, notice how they're interrupting. Notice how they're interrupting. He says, I'm changing my argument. He says, if, Asif, uncle, listen. Listen carefully to what Abbas said because he hung himself and now I'm going to embarrass them all because Abbas said, well, if the scholars disagree with the Quran, we go with the Quran. And if the Hadiths disagree with the Quran, we go with the Quran. Well, look at what the Quran says. This is Allah speaking to Muhammad and he's speaking and he says this. Surah 19, reading from 65. The Lord of the heavens and of the earth and all that is in between. So worship him alone and be constant and patient in his worship. Do you know of any who is similar to him? Of course, none is similar to him or co-equal. I'm reading the brackets just for brevity. Or comparable to him and he has none of the partners with him. There is nothing like unto him and there. And he is the all here and the all seer. Brackets, brackets, brackets. And the man, the disbelievers say, when I am dead, shall I then be raised up alive? Does not man... Remember that we created him while he was nothing. So he's talking about mankind. Mankind, that's everybody. So, by your Lord, surely we shall gather them together. Together, all of them, all of mankind. And also the shaitan and the devils. When we shall bring them round hell on their knees, then indeed we shall drag out from every sect all those who worst in obstinate rebellion against the most gracious Allah, then verily we know best those who are most worthy of being burnt therein. There is not one of you. Who is Muhammad speaking to? He's speaking to the Muslims. Oh, he's speaking to the Muslims. He is speaking to the Muslims. There is not one of you, but will pass over it. This is with your Lord a decree which must be accomplished. Then we shall save those who used to fear Allah. So you're going to all pass over it, and then Allah is going to save those who fear Allah and were dutiful to him. And we shall leave the polytheists there in humbled in their knees in hell. So it's talking about all, and it's saying you're all going to hell but then Allah will take out of hell those who are Muslims. So let Abbas be consistent. The Hadith say that no one will, there'll be some that are not harmed. Well, the Quran contradicts him. And then he points out another verse that I acknowledge seems to suggest 
that some Muslims won't go to hell. Well, the Quran says if it was from any other than Allah, they would find contradictions. And that, my friend, is a contradiction. Yes. Because one verse of the Quran says you're all going to hell, and another verse of the Quran says you're not. Perfect. Back to Psalm 5. Psalm 5 is a psalm of judgment. It's clear when you read all the verses, it's about judgment. So God judges those who sin. But he has sent his son in the world to save you whilst you are yet sinners, unconditionally, unconditionally. But the Quran says, Allah will save you conditionally. And no Muslim gets to get out of hell. So it's not Allah the most magnificent, the most merciful, it's Allah the most magnificent, the most just. So why don't you follow Allah if he's the most just and most magnificent? You agree with it? So you should follow the most magnificent, the most just. I'm just pointing out the contradiction. I'm just pointing out the contradiction. I think it's my turn, my turn. Yeah. Give another and then let's stop. Yeah, let's stop. I think, uh, I just want to say one thing. Since he's very good in twisting things, he should have been born in the 70s. When a twist was very popular then, yeah. you're born a little bit too late because you twist a lot. Here, when he says, don't the man see he, how he's, he's like created, Ibn Abbas. he's talking about the man, the man who are, who are, are <laughs> well, challenging who Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those who are the sinners, those who, those who are saying, how can we be raised up alive once we have died? Then Allah is telling that, don't the, see that Allah created the man, how Allah created it. He's answering the disbelievers. The whole context of chapter 19 is talking about the disbelievers, he's talking about the worst of creatures. Among them, Allah will forgive some people and take them out, and the rest of them, they he leave. Among them, but not the righteous. This has nothing to do with righteous. I told you already earlier, among the Muslims, there are many sinners. Among the Muslims, there are many bad people. I mean, for example, Saddam Hussein was a Muslim, isn't he? And what he done, he done a lot of bad things. And I think he will be answerable to those things as well. So, so there are many Muslims who are those are sinners, and they will be in this situation among, alongside the disbelievers. So among them, Allah takes some them some out and left some leave them in the hell. But verse Quran is clear. There will be Muslims. They will never hear, hear hell. They will be far removed from it. What we understand by it then meaning, it's not talking about every Muslim, every human being. It's talking about some Muslims and some sinners. Who will be punished? So, so you keep dragging the same point again and again, and I forget your other points. Can you remind me the other point? We move, we move from this point now. What was the point? You no, no, you finish. You, no, what was the other point you were making? You, you were making some other point. I forgot. You, you just gone on for tangent uh, for long. The point here is we we trying to say that Allah He will not punish the, the the believers, the good those who are good deeds. They will be far removed from. From, from hell, they'll be in paradise. Muhammad Sassam will be the first one to enter paradise. And also my brother pointed out, Muhammad Sassam in his life, he gave news to 10 Muslims, good news, that you are going to paradise. 10 Ashram, Ubershah, 10 of them. No, no, guarantee. That means, that means guarantee. That's not you two then. No, no, no. That, that means guarantee. You know, we, we, you know what we mean guarantee. No, they are. They, they, they are. not uh, repent. Brother, brother. They are the one guarantee paradise. No, they are the one guarantee paradise. Meaning, without any uh, any questions, you are straight to paradise. The rest, of no. course, Allah will depend. Then Allah depend, is not depend, even depend just, on your Allah ten. Not just, Basically, from the Hamid, we got ten people in heaven. Yeah. 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 Ten. No, no, ten is guarantee. You know, guarantee. Like there's there's no question will be asked. You straight to paradise. The rest, of course. You will be go through the judgment day, and if your, if your if your deeds are good, hellfire. you will go to paradise. No hellfire. And remember this Prince. verse, chapter 19, verse 70, 71 doesn't say they will be in hell. According to him, he says they will be going over, over, over is not same in, over. So when he says they will, Allah will take them out of hell. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's no contradiction here. Going over and being in is not the same thing. Yes. So there's no contradiction. There's no that Muslim will what be in hell. What does that say? Is that the Quran? It's the hadith. It's the commentary. Yes, the hadith. Oh, okay. I'm talking about the Quran here. What does he say there? I'm talking about the Quran here. What does he say there? I'm talking oh. about the Quran. Yes. Down yes. 
I'm talking fall down into hell. Fall, fall down into hell. Fall that's down. That's that hadith. Then they'll come up. That's what he says. Quran, yeah. We're talking about the Quran. You just said it. They'll go into hell and no, they'll come up. No, no, no. Literally says, says, literally says Muslims are going to hell. I said that. No, Quran. Literally, this is the interpretation of the verse. Hadith says that. This is literally the interpretation of the verse. Among the sinners. What does it say there? What, what does he say there? What, what does he say there? What does he say there? What does he say there? This is the translation. This is the, this is the hadith. Yes, and that's why you. That's why when it says, listen, because he said, and that we. we well, I mean, I'm talking. I'm talking to. So, Last, last, it literally last, says, last, you, you want it from the Quran, let me last, show you from the Quran. I haven't finished yet. Last, it says, it says here. Bob, I haven't finished yet. Just give me one minute. Just give me one minute. There is not, I just want to show her. One minute, brother. You, can, just, just you, you talk one. to the camera. No, no, I'm talking to you. There is not one of you, you but will pass over it. Why? Hell. Why is that's you. you. Just, 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 just let me, yeah. let me make a point. In the beginning, in the beginning, you make a point. In the beginning, you make a point. These scholars, am I more qualified? Than these scholars. Yes. Yeah, okay. Wait, so wait, answer, wait, sister, wait, sister, sister, one minute. Just give me one minute. Sister, sister just give Surah me one 19, minute. Sir 19, uh, please. Sir 19. Control oh, yourself. Yet, 71. Sir 19. Yeah. Let me make my point. I'm listening. Sister, just give me one minute. Can you just deal with me? Bob, can you just deal with me? I'm listening. After. After. She's Listen asked a question. I'm okay. just trying to help the lady. Bob asked a question in the beginning. Uh, am I more qualified than this scholar? Why I am? What should I ask the scholars? The question here is: Do you know that scholars disagree with the scholars? And yes. It doesn't only happen in Islam. Yeah. It happens in Christianity, in Judaism. Scholars disagree with the scholars. So how come? How come? Who's right? Are you listening, wrong? Paul? Who's right? <laughs> And who's wrong? Paul, are you listening? The point here is not that I know more than scholar or not. The point here is, if no matter scholars, whatever, how, whatever, how uh, qualified they are, preach it, Abbas. If, if they contradict Quran, I can challenge them and I can politely ask them the question, why are you going against the Quran? And let the scholar answer this question. So I am allowed to question anybody I want to because scholars are not God. Scholars can be right and scholars can be wrong. Thank you, Abbas. Have a good day. Happy Eid. Enjoy. So guys, so guys, so guys, listen to what Abbas said. He said that righteous Muslims will go to heaven. Just listen to Surah 19, 71, 72 again. There is not one of you, so that's speaking to all mankind. There is not one of you, but will pass over it hell. This is your law, a decree which must be accomplished. Then we, Allah, shall save those who used to fear Allah and were dutiful to him. So in other words, even Muslims who fear Allah and are dutiful in their religion are still going to hell. That's what your Quran promises you. And then it calls Allah the most merciful. If you want to find a merciful God, pick up your Bible and read it. Because in the Bible it says, and God demonstrated his love in this, that whilst the world was yet sinful, God sent forth his son to be a appropriation, to be a atonement for sin. It isn't dependent upon what you do, it's dependent upon what God does. Allah is not sending you to paradise, he's sending you to hell. And it says so in your book. That is not mercy. Mercy is that Allah forgives you. Jesus Christ offers salvation freely. You all have it. You just have to accept it. That's all you have to do. God bless and good night. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. First boot. First boot. First boot. Christus Anesti! Christus Anesti! Allah is not a mouse! He is not a mouse! You quoted out of context. Go on, sister.
Yep. If you look at verse 1968, sure, what one is second. Allah referring to? Yeah, I've read it earlier actually. We will surely gather along them with the devils yep. and then set them around hell on their knees. Yes. Yes. That's what he says. So by your Lord, we will surely gather them and the devils and we will bring them to the present hell, up, around hell upon their knees. Allah is referring to devils and defiant people. Yep. If you look at verse 1969, then we will certainly begin by dragging out of every group. Yes, exactly. Because there are groups of people. I honestly, I did read this. And the most defiant to the most compassionate. Yes. So why are you quoting verse 71 out of context? Because of 67. Does not man remember that we created him before while he was nothing? So it's yes. talking about the whole of mankind. So when it, wait one second, when it says, does not man remember that we created him before while he was nothing? And then it goes on to talk about gathering all of them. So it's talking about the whole of mankind. It clearly says, gather the people who do not remember, who are arrogant, because they don't believe that God is in control. So by your Lord, we shall gather them. Who's the them? Yes, but look at the context. No, who's the them? In 67, it's identified that yes. it's mankind. Disbelievers amongst mankind. the men. You're right. you're, the you're disbelievers. Ready. It's disbelievers. It's the disbelievers, and it says that in verse 6. So did God 66. only create disbelievers? Allah created believers and disbelievers. So it says... By the way, in Christianity, you does believe not, that as well. Does not yeah. man you remember... That the disbelievers are going to hell. We don't believe... Yes, you do. You don't even know what we believe. I do believe. Clearly you don't. I know what you do believe. You because know you, don't. you believe there's a judgment day. No, you do. Listen, listen, day, listen, listen. I'll explain my belief very quickly because we have to go. Because for us, as Christians, it's Mother's Day. So it's a day to honour our mothers. Every day should be to honour our mothers. Of course, mother. of course. But there's nothing wrong with having a special day to honour your mothers either. You're right, but there's nothing wrong with having a special day either. Okay. Yeah. So, and it's because it's Mother's Day and he wants to honour his mother, I need to go. But what I want to point out to you is that we Christians do believe in a day of judgment. You're absolutely right. But we Christians believe that we Christians are not going to hell. We're going to heaven. And we will receive rewards for our good works. So for our good deeds, we will receive extra rewards. Nobody no. can be guaranteed something. I'm really sorry. The whole point of being on this I'm, earth. I'm really sorry. I have to go. I'm really sorry. I have to go. I'm really sorry. I have to go. All the people that are doing so much evil in the world, they will not be accountable. It makes no logical no. sense. No, the evil doers will be accountable. Those that appeal to the mercy of God will be forgiven. Yes, so that is the Christian and message. Mm. And the same verse in the Quran refers to the disbelievers. The Quran and the Hadith say that you were no. going to hell. It talks about That's literally. It literally says that. So no, I'll show you. Would you, agree, would you agree? Would you agree the Hadiths are the best way to interpret the Quran? No, the Quran comes from all So you the don't Hadith. believe the Hadiths? The Quran comes you don't believe the Hadiths? Hadith. So you don't believe in the Hadiths? I want to, you, right, so you have to believe both, yes. and I know Islam well enough to know, to know that so when you want to understand with. the Quran, you look at what the Hadith say. Sorry? Why are you calling an elderly man Pussio? What did he say? Why are you calling an elderly man? So here we go, young Muslim thug threatens elderly Christian man. He just called him Shame on you. Shame on you. There you go. That's your deen. That's Islam. That's Muhammad. We don't need that crap. We need Jesus. That's what we need. You need Jesus. Anyway, Uncle Asif, thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Peace be with you, bro. Peace be with you. God bless you. Good night and God bless. Very shallow to say that's a deal. I could give some root. That's Christian example. Wait, wait, we can debate next week if you want. Do you want to debate next week? Why would I debate you? Okay, you can run. Every other Muslim does. Every other Muslim runs, you wouldn't be the first. I'll debate you next week if you want. What is the debate about? We can debate about Islamic Tawheed and Christian Trinity. The problem is Christianity is you associating something with the Creator. My message is this. Would you like, uh, would you like to debate that or not? What is the debate about? I've literally just told you. I've literally just told you. All right. When you're ready to debate, let me know. So next week. Don't associate. So next week. There you go. See? Runners. Runners to the last man. Runners to the last man.
See you later, Cassius Clay. See you later, Cassius. Cassius. You ran from the debate earlier. He ran, he ran, he ran from the debate earlier. It's all right, the ladies are out. He ran from the debate earlier. See you later, Cassius Clay. Remember to be a man. Right, that's the end of that chapter.